Okay, this video is in response to uh, a member of the Adobe Support Community Forums who asked the question about background images for responsive design projects. So I'm going to just show you my process. So let's say, for example, um, I just go to stock.adobe.com and look for a free um, abstract image that I'm going to use in my project here and we'll see if we can get something that's blurred because blurred tends to contrast better with uh, text and things like that this one's kind of nice so i'm going to go ahead and license that for free and we'll download that to my desktop here and i'll open it up in uh, photoshop when it's finished uh, and the reason i do that of course is that the images that come from stock photography sites like Adobe Stock are typically much larger and uh, larger in file size, but larger in resolution than what you actually need for an e-learning project. So let's go ahead and uh, do what I typically do for such a project. So I'm going to go with the default maximum size. Now I know responsive design can change its size and so forth but you still need to select a project size. So I'm gonna choose a project size that's just the default in Adobe Captivate, which is 1024 by 627. So how I like to do it is I go and use my crop tool and uh, I just type in those values if they're not already there from the last time I did almost exactly the same thing here. So there it is. Now this will crop it to the aspect ratio which looks like it's pretty close it's a little bit that's eh, pretty close to that size so i'm going to crop it so it's the right aspect ratio and then i'm going to click on file and export as in this case a jpeg now it doesn't need to be the highest possible setting you can actually reduce the file size quite a bit by you know somewhere in the medium quality here but here's what I'm talking about. This image is 5,000 by 3,062 pixels. I obviously don't need it that large, so I'm just going to resize it to 1024 by 627. And I'm just going to export that to my desktop. I'll leave the original name um, and we'll just save it there. And I can close Photoshop at this time. So let's close uh, Adobe Stock. And uh, let's go to our properties inspector for this first blank slide. And we will go to the master slide view here. And this is a responsive design project. So, um, I mean, a couple of things that you can do. The first instinct is that maybe every single slide will have that particular background in. So, we will choose um, a project background. So, I'll navigate to that particular version and you of course i'll just check the size there there's the original at 837 kilobytes and the optimized size 51 kilobytes and so that becomes the background of all my master slides and i can start to build my master slide templates on top of this so for example uh, my blank slide here if i resize this Here's the issue that comes into place when you're dealing with the master slide background like this. It's going to distort the image and that may not be what you want to do. So let me control Z and undo this so that we don't have that image in place. And instead, I'm going to insert a new content master slide. So this will be let's say for all my standard content i prefer to do this on a master slide basis per master slide and uh, in this case here let's add the appropriate fluid boxes so if i choose let's say a place for my title center content and maybe some navigation controls and we'll just uh, resize the top area for the title make it a little smaller maybe 10 percent is suitable and then my navigation controls will go down here at 10 percent 
So I have a large center content that's going to be reserved for, um, you know, where I'm going to put additional fluid boxes on the film strip or other things. I'll be using this a lot throughout my course here. Before I move away from this, I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to first of all select the parent fluid box and make sure that my wrap options are squeeze in a column because I always want these to stay on top of one another. And within the individual fluid boxes, you can set up your content flow and wrap options however you see fit. So maybe we'll have uh, wrap to next row for the center content. But for our navigation controls at the bottom, we might want to choose something like maybe space around and that looks pretty good. So what I do now with that background image that we've created, I select my utmost parent fluid box and here I change the fill to my image fill. We use the fill pattern itself to go and select that image that we've just optimized again double check that you're selecting the correct one. In this case, I want the optimized version. Uh, if you're selecting a larger version, it might not load properly. You might not see it properly, but here I've got a nice small 51 kilobyte file. So this should be no problem whatsoever. Now, of course, I'm still going to run into maybe layout issues. If I always want this lighter pink area in the upper right, we're going to make sure we choose tile and maybe choose top right as an example. So this will keep it uh, always that pink area to the top right, which looks nice, but maybe you want it center aligned so you can choose that and it will resize just to the center of that image. But if you like it left aligned there, maybe you need more of a darker contrast here. You can choose uh, left or you know, top left or bottom left, whatever works for you. And that will resize it and keep that purpley blue area always on the left, regardless of the size there. Uh, one other thing, keep in mind that you can also add background fills for in your individual fluid boxes. So if you want a strong contrast for, let's say your navigation controls that you'll later add, you can go ahead and set a color fill to, to rest over top of that background. So for example, I could choose a very dark gray and we'll make that 100%. So that will always be the dark gray. And maybe for the title we want, let's say the color white, but mostly transparent, we'll make it 40% there. So when we add our objects in, there'll be some, some background uh, contrast. So you can have many things in your fluid boxes and, and really uh, create uh, a really nice look and feel for your fluid box responsive design. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.